Hello and welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. Topping our news, powerful words from those who survived the horror at the Fort Lauderdale Airport. What the gunman did, the immediate aftermath, and his encounter with law enforcement months before the shooting. ABC's Kenneth Moten with the story. And then the pop started, we hit the ground, I turned around and she was shot in the head and killed. Travelers in the thick of the chaos at Fort Lauderdale's airport. Her husband was shot in the face, the guy next to him was shot in the cheek, the guy next to him was face down, he was dead. Witnesses looked on in horror as a gunman unleashed the hell of bullets. He reloaded and he's walking just with his arms straight out, stone face. I saw a man get shot in the head. I saw there were people with blood on them. This man saved by his laptop as hundreds ran for cover. I was crouched up against the conveyor belt and I felt a thud. Later I found out that um, there was a bullet that ricocheted and entered my backpack. Without the backpack, without my laptop and the case and the plastic case, the bullet would have gone through my shoulder blades. Heavily armed SWAT teams rushed to the scene. Under arrest, 26-year-old Esteban Santiago, who threw down his gun and surrendered without a struggle. FBI agents say last November, the ex-Army reservists walked into their Anchorage office agitated and incoherent. They say Santiago made statements about mind control. He was taken to a mental health facility. There is currently no indication Mr. Santiago was working with any other individuals when he planned and carried out yesterday's attack. Terminal 2 is open again as airlines work to get thousands of stranded air travelers to their destinations. The suspected gunman is expected to be in court Monday. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, Fort Lauderdale. Esteban Santiago has been charged and now faces the death penalty. Governor Scott has called for flags to be flown at half staff in tribute to the lives lost. And for the displaced travelers, the state is providing resources such as counseling, hotel accommodations, and lost papers and belongings. In Bradenton, a man and woman were arrested around 5 this evening after burglarizing a man's home. Deputies say the homeowner found the two intruders who fled the residence. They were tracked down by deputies and their canine units near a wooded area. Deputies say both individuals were identified by the victim and arrested. They believe one or both offenders may have been homeless. Several Sarasota County residents have been dealing with power outages today. They were caused by down power lines from the morning storms. Florida Power and Light lists hundreds of affected customers in Northport tonight and hundreds in Sarasota earlier this morning. Storm winds separated a power line near Bee Ridge Road this morning, causing outages for nearby homes and delaying drivers. Florida Power and Light responded to both situations. And once those storms cleared, you may have noted the air was a little crisper outside today. Let's head over to Wendy Ross for a first check on that weather. Wendy? Once those storms came in, those temperatures really started to drop. And take a look at what's going to be taking place tonight. We're going to be seeing freeze warnings to our north with a wind chill advisory over the northern portion of the state. And then right here across our own viewing area, we've got a wind chill advisory tonight. And then we're also looking at gale force winds out in the Gulf of Mexico. Right now, our temperature is all already at 42 degrees. That's awfully chilly for us. We have low dew point, low humidity, winds coming in out of the north northeast, and they're fairly strong at around 16 miles per hour. And this is what we can expect to see over the overnight time period. Temperatures will be dropping down into the 30s for us before we start to see things warming up. And we'll let you know how warm it's going to get tomorrow. But here's a here's a little hint for you. You may need that jacket just a little while longer. We'll talk about that. Adam. All right, thank you, Wendy. And as those temperatures drop on the Sun Coast, county officials are urging the community to be prepared and use caution. With some overnight, uh, with some cold weather overnight, shelters have been open for the less fortunate in Sarasota. The Salvation Army Center of Hope, located on 10th Street, is offering shelter in Venice. Grace United Methodist Church is also open. They are located on East Field Avenue, and in Northport, New Hope Community Church will be offering assistance. They are located at South Biscayne Drive. Well, Thunder by the Bay, Sarasota's annual motorcycle festival kicked off on Thursday and runs through Sunday. But as ABC 7's Kate Flexter tells us, for the first time in its 19-year history, bikers are partying away from downtown. 
Well, despite its name, Thunder by the Bay actually isn't by the bay anymore. Organizers say the change of venue is going smoothly, but some downtown merchants are sad to see it go. Whether it's the motorcycles or the music, Thunder by the Bay tends to draw a crowd. We're expecting to have just as many people and to raise just as much money. For 19 years, the motorcycle rally and music festival known as Thunder by the Bay was located right next to Sarasota's Bayfront. But after drawing some negative feedback from residents and merchants, the venue shifted to Lakewood Ranch's premier sports campus. We want a permanent home because it is a destination event and it will continue. Event organizer Lucy Nicondri says that negative feedback, coupled with potential changes to the city's special events regulations, was reason enough to change the venue. Oh, the uncertainty of that plus the pushback we really didn't have a choice um, but we're very happy that Lakewood Ranch welcomed us and we were able to expand for this year for some the new venue is a positive it's a huge spot I think it's much better than what it was downtown I think it's a good spot it's just going to take a couple years and then it'll be just as good or maybe better but for others it's more enjoyable downtown because you could do more than motorcycle stuff it was definitely something special downtown, but unfortunately I think that just ran its course and they're just not allowing it no more. That's a sentiment echoed by head of the Downtown Merchants Association and owner of Soto Opticians, Ron Soto. I hope it's not a trend. We want to keep downtown vibrant. Uh, part of the allure of moving downtown is that you have all these things to uh, come down from your apartments and see. Thunder by the Bay is the biggest fundraiser of the year for Suncoast Charities for Children. Last year, the economic impact was $8.8 .8 million. For that reason, Soto was sad to see it go, especially on a traditionally slow week for merchants. It's the week after Christmas and New Year's and all the things that we've just had happening, so it's a little dead this time of year. This gave the downtown a nice shot in the arm. Soto hopes to see Sarasota maintain its status as a friendly city for events and festivals. Maybe in the future we can come to terms and maybe Thunder could come back to downtown. You never know. If you're interested in checking out the event, it runs through tomorrow until 5.30 p.m. and admission is free. Back to you. All right, thank you, Kate. The city of Northport celebrating upcoming improvements at Butler Park this morning in a groundbreaking ceremony for three new multi-purpose fields. In November, the Northport City Commission approved a construction contract to renovate the sports fields at Butler Park for $1.6 million. The city removing three baseball diamonds since and replacing them with multi-purpose fields for more of a uh, variety of activities. This is a very youthful community, families, and we have such a need in the community for more fields, for more events and, and different leagues. It's just going to bring a whole lot of great opportunity for this community as we move forward. The fields are part of several improvements the city has been implementing to boost community activity in Northport, in Northport's parks, including the construction of a splash pad, three playgrounds, and a new trail. The improvements to Butler Park are expected to be completed by the beginning of fall. Still to come here on ABC 7, severe wintry weather in the northern states freezing several travelers. This story and more when we return. Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discovered new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. On the next Black Almanac. When I see Americans fighting for economic, environment, and social justice, or the self evident truth that black lives matter, I know that Dr. King's teachings are still as meaningful and powerful as they were in Birmingham and Selma, Alabama many years ago. Sunday morning at 7.30 on ABC7. Our community has its struggles. The fact is, people have less than they did just a few years ago, and sadly, the need becomes more profound every day. Season of Sharing provides funds to help individuals and families in need, ensuring they will not end up homeless and without a roof over their heads. Together, providing a helping hand and making a difference. Season of Sharing. Give today at cfsarasota.org. 
At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, give us a call at our office and ask for Jackie Avenia. Check out My Sun Coast Dining on MySunCoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blog, step-by-step -step videos, and Sun Coast Restaurant Guide. You'll find it all at MySunCoast.com slash dining. What does it mean when New South Window says Factory Direct? It means we have a factory. It means we eliminate the middleman. It means you get an award-winning, energy-efficient window at factory direct prices. Plus, New South windows are made in Florida. Port Florida home. Bye, Florida workers, because we know Florida weather. Right now, buy two windows. Get the third free, plus our lifetime warranty. New South window. We manufacture. We install. We guarantee. Call now. Here in Florida, it's getting colder, but nothing compared to the winter weather across the northern states. Snow and ice causing chaos for drivers in the frost. ABC's Elizabeth Herr with the report. If you're a bird, it's not so bad. A heavy snowfall, very scenic from the sky. But if you're on the ground, the new year is blowing in with some wicked weather. A winter witch's brew that turned highways into hazards. Horrible. I'm skidding yeah. everywhere. It's ridiculous. Causing hundreds of crashes. Don't go on the roads if you don't have to. Especially if you don't have four-wheel drive, don't get out on the road. Advice that came too late for some. This is my first time driving in the snow. And I right off the road. In central Connecticut, a travel nightmare. At least 20 cars, three tractor trailers, and a tanker colliding along I-91 near Middletown shut down the northbound and southbound lanes. Traffic snarled for miles. Air travelers fared little better. So many flights delayed or grounded. I'm going to pretend like it's not snowing. Blizzard-like conditions are sweeping snow and sleet up the East Coast. 50 million people under weather advisories, bitter cold and wind chills in the forecast. And what do you do when the snow cancels your swim meet? Go, 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 go. Well, in Blacksburg, Virginia, these swim team members made quite a splash anyway, diving right in for some warm-up laps that turned out pretty cold. Michael Phelps never tried this. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, New York. I'm speechless. I am too. That's pretty crazy. That's... Do you, I have never driven in snow. Yeah. Uh, have I've, you? Yeah, but not really bad. Not like that. Oh uh, my yeah, gosh. Not, not bad snow like no, that. No, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know what to do. Just drive slow. I've driven Don't in panic. thunderstorms, and I do not panic in a thunderstorm. I can drive through any thunderstorm. Well, we're used to those here. Yeah, I mean, and we got them this morning. We, we sure actually did. had some. We, we had sure some did. good thunderstorms that came on through today, and that came in with the cold front, and now that's gone, and look what it left behind. We've got the freeze warnings in effect <laughs> over the northern part of the state with a wind chill advisory also over northern Florida. Our area seeing a wind chill advisory as well. And we also have gale force winds that are coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Today, believe it or not, our daytime high was reported at about 8 o'clock this morning. And then from then, as soon as those cold rains came on in, the temperatures really, really started to go down. We had an overnight low of 54 degrees. We're going to be much colder than that tonight. And right now, we're already looking at a 42 degree reading under clear skies, low dew points, moderate humidity at this point, and winds are still strong. They're coming in out of the north northeast at around 16 miles per hour. But we've got the freezing temperatures already across the panhandle. So Pensacola and Panama City reporting 31 degrees. Tallahassee is at 34 and Jacksonville and Gainesville also in the 30s. Our area in the 40s right now, getting very close to that 39 degree mark. So we could see our temperature get down to about 39 degrees for some locations around the re around the area and once again we do have that wind chill
Special Advisory in effect, so those temperatures could feel as though they're around 32, 31 degrees. But this is what it's going to look like throughout the overnight time period. Lots of 30s and 40s on the map for tonight. So the overnights and into tomorrow look like this. We're going to be seeing our temperatures dropping down into the upper 30s for tonight. And then we start to see a general warm up. But that isn't much of one. You can see a high of only 54 degrees for tomorrow. Lots and lots of sunshine, though. The winds are going to be strong, so those are the things that we're going to be experiencing. And that cold front came on through today, and you can see that now things have really cleared out. All of the rain is gone. It's exited the state, so we're not looking for any more rainfall to come on through. And we are also looking at very dry conditions. You can see that moving on in and across the state and settling in across the state of Florida. So we're going to be dry for a while. Over the next couple of days, we're going to be seeing very cold weather for tonight and tomorrow. It'll be the coldest weather so far. We have a wind chill advisory, a high surf advisory, and strong winds in our forecast for tomorrow. And this is what we can expect over the next couple of days. The good news is this is Florida, and it doesn't last long. So we've got Sunday with a high of 55 and windy conditions, and then on Monday, much more mild with 70s starting for the work week. Adam. All right, thank you, Wendy. Ford has announced it is canceling plans to build a factory plant in Mexico. Instead, the company plans to create 700 new jobs in Flat Rock, Michigan. Ford CEO Mark Fields calling the investment a vote of confidence in the pro-business environment being created by Donald Trump. However, he stressed Ford did not do any, special, any sort of special deal with the president-elect. We look at, uh, first we do what's right for our business. This makes sense for our business. And we look at all factors, including what we view as a more positive U.S. manufacturing business environment. A $7 million investment, the new plant will produce more electric and self-driving cars. Ford CEO saying the company foresees electric vehicles surpassing their gas counterparts within the next 15 years. In Bradenton, a day for truck lovers. Families enjoying the Touch a Truck event at, a, at the Manatee County Downtown Central Library. For kids, it was the opportunity to climb in and honk some of those horns on the different trucks. I have a couple grandsons that thought it would uh, be fun and uh, spend a little time. They love trucks. And as you can see, we've got pretty good display here of trucks and options with a lot of noise, too. This was Manatee Library's third year hosting the free event. Stick around, sports is coming up next. How long have we been married then? For 76 years. He was kind and generous to me before we married, and he was kind and generous to me all these years. We decided on meals on wheels because I was getting to the point where I couldn't do all the things that I had been able to do. We're the Spans. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, Give us a call at our office and ask for Beth Ann Muling. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes, B, console her, don't worry, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot, or C, find her a new boyfriend. Nice single boys. That was weird. As a parent, there are no perfect answers, but you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. I believe that home is where your pet is. And that loving an animal means never giving up on them, never letting them go. I believe that when you spare and neuter your pets, you help decrease the number of homeless animals. Because every dog and cat deserves a place to call home. I believe that I found my best friend at a shelter. And you can too. We believe that together with Best Friends Animal Society, we can bring about a time when there are no more homeless pets. Visit ambassadors.bestfriends.org. 
All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Joey Panic on Suncoast View. The musical Sister Act performs right here in the studio, plus red carpet recap from the Golden Globes and Drunken Poet in the Kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. Now, sports. The Lightning went into Philadelphia this afternoon on a three-game losing streak to face a Flyers team who have lost their last five. Well, something's got to give, and in the first period, things looking pretty good. Nikita Kucherov scoring on the two-on-one. Vladislav Nemesnikov with the assist. One-nothing bolt. Second period, the Flyers answer with a two-on-one of their own. Travis Konecki beating the goal, beating the glove of Vasilevsky. Tie game minutes later, Sean Couturier able to rip away a rebound from Vasilevsky. Wide open goal and Philly never looks back. The Lightning lose their fourth straight 4-2. Four to two. Well, no hockey in Amelie Arena today. Instead, media day for, the, for Monday's national championship, a rematch between two iconic head coaches. But this year's matchup may be more about who's on the other end of the headset, the assistant coaches. A week is a short time to prepare for a defense like Clemson, even shorter when it's your first time calling plays all season. I don't think I could have foreseen four months ago when I was contemplating doing TV um, to get into this situation. In September, Alabama hired former USC head coach Steve Sarkeesian as an offensive analyst, working under his Trojan predecessor Lane Kiffin. Now that Kiffin has taken another head coaching job, Sarkeesian will fill his shoes for a second time on college football's biggest stage. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, I've been fortunate to have coached in some big games in my career. Obviously, this is another big one. Freshman quarterback Jalen Hurts says Sarkeesian has been more militant this week, as opposed to Kiffin's more laid-back demeanor. Oh, you're hearing this voice, you're hearing, you're hearing this guy, you're hearing this guy. And then you got another guy that's coming in. So it's kind of weird. On the other sideline, Clemson's Brett Venables is coming off arguably his best coaching performance ever in a season in which he was named college football's top assistant. With this short amount of time, you know, you got to feel like he's had some influence. I think they come from the same coaching tree. Uh, he'll have some wrinkles, and his DNA will probably be a little bit different on how he views things, and uh, we're just going to have to adjust to things as the game goes. When you start calling plays, you start calling plays, and, and you don't get caught up in everything that's going on outside. You focus on what's going on between the lines, and, and then that's the mindset I'll have. In the NFL, playoffs kicking off today with the wild card games. And in the AFC, rookie Connor Cook trying to lead the Raiders past Houston and into the second round. But first quarter, rookie mistake. Jadavion Clowney baiting Cook into a swing pass and makes an incredible one-handed interception. Three on the day for Connor Cook. Brock Osweiler, on the other hand, better with a 38-yard connection. Here with Don DeAndre Hopkins, a lot of help from Hopkins. Spectacular catch, he would score. Two plays later, and the Raiders can't fill the void left by Derek Carr's injury. They lose 27 to 14. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. Run, I think life's a journey. Every step brings me closer to my goal. I run to see the world, and when you're surrounded by so much beauty, how could it not take your breath away? Join us at Robinson Preserve Friday, March 31st at 6.30 p.m. for our 9th annual Twilight 5K and 10K race at one of the most beautiful scenic race courses in Florida. This, this race, race will leave, leave you breathless. breathless. 
we're losing exotic animals on a daily basis and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. At SWC Properties, we pride ourselves in providing to you the very best in customer satisfaction and the secrets getting out. Maybe that's why so many people have chosen to list their homes with our friendly and qualified agents. After all, it only makes sense to list with a growing agency that markets in so many places. To list your home with SWC, give us a call at our office and ask for Eric Schrock. If you're not in control, then who is? Live above the influence. This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Gold fever has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. At Evie's Tavern on Main Street today, a fundraiser for a little boy in need. Six-year-old Cooper was born with a neurological condition called Chiari malformation, a disorder that comes along with several other conditions that can only be treated by a trained doctor. Cooper's mom saying she is thankful for the help she has received from the community. Cooper has a Facebook page that we've created for him and through that we've really been able to spread awareness and I have a huge support system. Um, people have been amazing. It's what I could do. I mean, I, I would do anything. I have a three-year-old son and if he was sick, I'd hope that someone would do what they could to help me. Local businesses and individuals supported Cooper's cause with items and services to be raffled off. Celebrities and friends partied at the White House Friday night to say goodbye to President Obama and his wife Michelle. The Obamas throwing a farewell bash for VIPs, donors and supporters. Obama telling People Magazine last month he was planning to host a one of a host one kind of grown-up party before he departs office. The last major bash held in the White House was his 55th birthday party in August. Well, ain't no party like a White House party. Oh, my goodness. Isn't that something? All those people showing up for this? Isn't <laughs> well, yeah, they got something? room for it, I guess, if, if anywhere. The White House, probably. That's the place to have a party, isn't Absolutely. it? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> well, it's going to be cold tonight. Make sure you bundle up because it doesn't get much warmer tomorrow. All right. We'll see you then.